Welcome to Freight Waves Now, Transparency 19 Tuesday style. We are bringing it to you right here on the floor where it's all happening. The Super Bowl of logistics is what some people are saying, and why would I disagree? We're full of electric blue. We're full of cool screens. The screens are getting bigger. The data is getting more transparent and visible each and every day. The data train rolls on without us. You might as well be on board that train. And speaking of today, for the data train, we have got Donnie Gilbert bringing us some interesting insights. He's been trying to call seasonality upticks for a while, and guess what? It's all happening where Donnie is right a month later. And John Kingston will be bringing us oil reports. He can connect anything to oil. What is up his bag of tricks? Let's find out. All right, Donnie. Good Where? afternoon, Chad. How are hey, you doing today? Hey, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Are you having fun? I'm having a great time here. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. Great. Been up there, spoke a few times on stage, and now we're out here filming on the big floor. All right, man. So, uh, what we've been looking at, you know, over the past month or so, we have seen some issues with produce season. We've had some, a lot of rain through January and February, a lot of cooler weather in California that slowed down the pace of the year-round produce that's produced in California. We had some uh, really wet weather in northern Florida and southern Georgia that pretty much delayed the fields being planted, which has pushed kind of back the produce season. But over the past few days, we started to see some changes. We saw South Georgia and North Florida pick up, you know, a few weeks ago, but it's even getting hotter. We now see that up on our map here. We've got Jacksonville has rejection rates that are over 25%. We see Savannah has rejection rates over 35%. Yes! So those markets are really getting hot right now. If you've got a, a reefer trailer right now, send it to Savannah, Georgia would be my first bet. And first of all, what we're looking at here, Chad, this is our reefer, ten, reefer tender reject index map. I love so it. I'm measuring the rejects by just the reefer carriers only. We've been talking to some reefer carriers that they, the, and brokers, they specialize in it. And one of the things that they are excited about are some of these features on sonar where they can get head haul information. It's a lot more uh, visible and they're gonna be able to do a lot more with it. So this is exciting stuff. And also, this is great that you're bringing us up to date on why the delayed, why the delayed produce season. Yeah, so what's finally exciting is we're starting to see some light blue down here in Miami and Lakeland. So rejection rates in Miami have now hit about 10%. Lakeland was a little bit behind it, around 9.5%. So we're seeing produce, it was moving slowly down there, but now we're starting to see the rejection rates pull up. Yeah. And with uh, rejection rates increasing, you know, they correlate a lot with the rates. So now the rates are starting to pick up in those areas. So now if I was a reefer carrier and you wanted to go deeper into Florida, Now's the time to go ahead and probably start moving your trucks deeper into Florida because the rates are picking up. So from a broker standpoint, go ahead and start looking for loads, maybe out of the Northeast, out of the Midwest, and aiming those guys down to Florida. You can also move dry van freight on a reefer trailer. So call your shipper and say, hey, can this move on a reefer trailer? Because they're a little bit heavier than a regular dry van trailer and a little bit narrower sometimes. But if it'll fit, it'll ship and they'll give you a better rate headed down into the Florida area because they know they can get a promising rate coming out of the Florida region right now as produce season picks up. Wow, what an update. I mean, only one chart, that's all we need. All Lots of great today. information. Chad, Thanks for the insights. Been fun at the show, sir, keep going. Thank you, market expert Donnie Gilbert. He just keeps getting better each and every time that he comes to the camera, doesn't he? That's exciting. John Kingston, legendary uh, John Kingston, great to have you here. What do, you, what do you got up your sleeve? Well, this is, of course, one of the most basic uh, oil charts that the trucking industry cares about. This is the DOE average retail weekly, the, the, the weekly average retail diesel price okay. kicked up a tiny bit. Yesterday, it's released every Monday around 5 o'clock. And I think what's notable about this is that this may be the last one for at least a little while. Uh, the oil market's taken a pretty significant hit since about a week ago Friday. It started, of course, as we know, the price since January 1st has added, you know, about four, uh, how many, about 20 to $25 in basis crude. Uh, diesel's been up, gasoline's been up even more. Uh, it started with uh, Donald Trump telling a group of reporters, it wasn't a tweet that he had called OPEC and told them to lower gasoline prices as if everything like that was so simple. There is serious question whether he did in fact call OPEC because right. the fact is the main d decision makers in the oil world are not at the OPEC headquarters in Vienna. So, But however, that set off a decline in price 
that a lot of people are scratching their heads at because the fact is there are still some fundamentals that are pointing higher within the, since the start of the month. The waivers on Iranian exports have gone, uh, uh, allowing a lot of countries to be, to, uh, to not allowing, but stopping a lot of countries from importing Iranian oil. Well, we had j just when we thought that the uh, market was immune to the Trump tweets, they're scratching their heads now. Maybe there is influence. Well, I think that was uh, that was a little bit of a surprise. You're right because okay. the last time that he tweeted, the, it was basically out of the market in an hour, and this one set off the price, and it's been on a pretty significant decline since. But uh, again, other other factors. There's been contaminated oil coming out of Russia. Uh, that problem seems to have been uh, cleared up, but. They're not, not everything's going to get right for several months. Uh, you have uh, the North Sea is going to have some maintenance. It's going to be cutting production down there significantly. Uh, you have uh, Venezuela, sanctions against Venezuela by the U.S. Yeah. Those, are, those are hitting now. There really aren't a lot of bearish factors in the market, and yet the price has been down, I'd say, for the last, you know, most of the last 10 days or so. Would you th therefore predict that the fundamentals will lead it to, to coming back? I, th uh, I think the fundamentals are still pretty strong right now. But I would say that this number, which I know the trucking industry looks at probably closer than any other number, uh, may have hit a, hit a high, for, at least for now. Okay. Wow. Thank you for that analysis. Very good. Bringing it to you, what is happening right now on Freight Waves Now, even when we're at Transparency 19, because our, we promise to bring this to you each and every business day. And it's our pleasure to do so. It's fun. This is what we're talking about. And you know what? Like having an open mind and talking about these candid conversations about what's happening in logistics and, and all, the, all the data that's happening is fun too. We are really having a great time. Been inspired by some of the keynotes like uh, Brad Jacobs today, Brad Stone, Gary Vaynerchuk, earlier like we have seen some fantastic uh, interesting insights from our keynotes and they're stimulating my mind and I hope that you can live stream things from uh, from our own website because there is a lot of stuff to to get you excited about this is an unusual conference and it's not just about being bigger and that's better it's about actually like having an open mind pushing things forward like we're trying to do in the industry so thanks for tuning in we're gonna keep bringing it to you stay tuned we'll We'll see you Wednesday. Keep sharing the love on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you can. And in the meantime, don't worry, be happy.